Welcome to the live tribe today, gentlemen. It's Saturday, March 11th, 2023. And good guys to great men, myself, Jeff Allen, Steve Horseman, Dan Dorr, and all of the other amazing coaches in Good Guys to Great Men. We've been doing these live tribes since the beginning of the pandemic. We got together, we pow out about how can we help men during that time. This is, of course, what, almost three years ago it started now, guys? So as of three years ago, we realized that not only are men isolated or feel isolated and alone, not only do we um, accidentally stop seeing our friends from childhood or college or that we've made through the local softball team, we stop seeing our friends as guys, we just focus on work, we focus on the kids. If you've got kids, we just focus on you know plowing forward and working a million hours a week and we lose ourselves in that isolation. And COVID obviously ramped that up, right? Well, tenfold feeling isolated. And so we began these live tribe calls three years ago to serve you, to serve guys in this group so you know that you're not alone. You know that you have brothers that you can connect with. You know that when you have questions, you can come to a place where you're not gonna be judged, right? We're not your neighbor, we're not your father or your brother or your uncle. We're not your best friend. So here it's actually easier to be open and ask questions and tell your stories and feel like someone sees you and cares about you because I do care about you as a brother. I do care about you spiritually as a person and I do find value in you. And being here shows that you find value in yourself, that you want good things in the world and you want to learn and you want to step forward. How to be an amazing man when you turn your shoulders, as I say, you turn your shoulders toward your life, your career, your passions, whatever that may be, your inspiration, your purpose, and skills of when you turn your shoulders towards your woman or toward your relationship or toward a potential future relationship. Right? Maybe you want version 2.0 with your wife if you're separated or she's not sure if she's in love with you right now or she needs space. Maybe you want a version 2.0 with her in the future or the potential of that. Or regardless, if you're no longer with your wife in the future, then when you turn your shoulders toward the next relationship or the next 100 women that you're with, that you have skills there as well of presence and depth and grounding. And you're not able to be knocked on your back by surprises any longer. You want to know the skills of that. And that's why we're here, gentlemen, in these live tribe calls, in one-on-one -on -one coaching, and group coaching, and the round table. So I am going to keep my slideshow like this so I can see my slides on the left. I'm not going to expand it. So some of you OCD guys, I'm doing this on purpose. That's all right. <laughs> and a little bit of housekeeping. This is being recorded. I love when you keep your cameras on so I can connect with you. Uh, if you have any questions about, you know, is my face going to be shown or this kind of thing, Go ahead and turn your camera off if that concerns you. That's fine. This is going to be shown within Good Guys to Great Men and within Great Men Move Mountains, which is my forum. Of course, in the roundtable in Great Men Move Mountains, those are private forums. Right? But if you're concerned about that, you can turn your camera off. I love that when you have your cameras on so I can see you and connect with you. Right? Good to see you guys here today. Yeah, I'll say again, Larry came in, Graham came in, Harry. And I asked Tony about this picture. Mentor Headland State Park Dunes and Beach on Lake Erie. Oh, nice. Favorite spot that helps me remember my frame, he says. Yeah, remembering your frame. It's a huge piece of who we are as men and, and of depth. Love seeing you guys here. Nobody can bring you peace but yourself. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Nobody can bring you peace but yourself. This is something that we learn, I think, the hard way a lot of times. We have to experience hell. We have to experience the challenge of putting all your eggs in a basket in one direction. And that basket falls on the floor and smashes those eggs when we feel like she says, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Or I'm not sure if I want to stay together. Or maybe we should open the marriage or I felt betrayed for the past 15 years. You haven't seen me. You haven't connected with me. So we must know within our own selves that we can only bring peace 
to ourselves. This is an inside game. Our topic for today, how to heal and open your wife into more femininity. Why is she so closed down? What is my unique head, heart, balls, and breath practice to do this, to open her, to heal her, and to heal yourself and the relationship between the two of you, head, heart, balls, and breath, and what to say when she challenges the new you. Grabbed a couple of testimonials of men who've been in this group, either for a short amount of time or a long amount of time. So here's one. Something happened during the last few days. I talked a couple of weeks ago about feeling that I'm getting closer to my edge with my wife. I'm friendly and open-hearted despite her poor behavior. I'm leaning even more into social interactions. I'm thinking more positively about my future. I'm thinking about what I need and want. I was just selected today in a lottery to run the Big Sur Marathon. It's been five years since my last one. So finding himself again. I just feel more confident and relaxed, like a big weight has been lifted from my shoulders. For those of you who are, for those of you who are still fairly new to this journey, I know you hear it from other guys and it's difficult to imagine when you're in the thick of it, but better days are ahead. Either I'm in the eye of the storm or coming out the other end of it, but I, but I am in many ways feeling better about me than I have in a really long time. That's what this work is about. Finding you again, transformation within you. And here's one that, this is from the round table. I just looked before this call. This was posted this morning, just today. My wife, early November. I love you, but there's no chemistry. We should practice abstinence. Ouch. Early December. So that would have been three months ago, four months ago, early December. I, I joined this group after finding Steve and Dan's content on YouTube. I've been putting the principles of the recommended reading into practice less than perfectly, but the best I could muster at the time. My wife this week, and below this, she, he showed a picture of a text exchange with his wife where she called him Captain. She said, love you, Captain. That's her nickname for me now. <laughs> he says, the main difference now is back then I would have needed this validation and affirmation to feel okay about myself. Now, even if she is expressing complaints that feel like personal attacks, I still feel okay about myself. Don't get me wrong. I prefer affirmation and affection, but I don't need it to feel okay. Absolutely. And this is what I, this is what I mean when I say we don't want to be hold on to our face when things are good either. When she says loving things or she throws a test at us with a smile or she walks, she walks across the bathroom naked when she's asked you for no intimacy. Right? These kind of tests, either positive and verbal, positive in relation, positive in showing her physical body off to you and you're surprised by what's going on. I don't want you to be pulled onto your face in, in it by any kind of positive interaction. You want to stay grounded and rooted like an oak tree, yeah? And I don't want you to be pushed onto your back when she's upset or has an emotional storm or she's unconsciously, not purposefully necessarily, but unconsciously testing you to test those roots. So if, when things go well, because through this work, they will. They will start to go incredibly well, either through in your own self, your confidence with you in your relationship and more intimacy, or ongoing, potentially after this relationship, if it doesn't work out. Like that's what this work is about. It's about you feeling amazing within yourself, no matter what. So I do want to talk with you guys today. I, I do not find it fun to listen to myself talk. And so I'd love to in engage with you. I do have more slides, of course, to get into more presentation to get into. I'm going to share some links with you right now. And here in a moment, I want to open up to a man who to any man, who may feel like he's in the middle of the shit right now. If you feel like, if I asked you on a scale of one to 10, how are you doing today in your positivity, in your focus towards yourself, in your action? If I asked you, how are you doing one to 10? And you feel like you're underneath a five. If you, like, if you feel like you're underneath a five right this moment, I want to talk with you today. Because I want you to know that you're not alone. And I want you to ask questions if you have them or share your story with us today. So I just punched into the chat. Yeah, I saw some gentleman in the, I'm not sure how to say your name. Was Jack. It, that's Jack. 
Yeah, yeah, please come on in. So a two. I'm from Holland. I'm from Holland. Holland. Do you hear me? Yes, go for it. I'm, I'm from Holland. Yeah, welcome. What's your name? Jack. Jack? Yeah, or Jacobus. It's also okay. Jacob, it's also okay. Gotcha. Jack or Jacob or Jacob. Yeah, yeah I love yeah. it. Very yeah. nice. Very nice. Yes. Yeah. Please, please tell us about your two. Um, I'm a Dutch guy. I'm living in Hungary. Maybe you know Hungary. Yeah. I've and never been there, Jack, but I know of it. Yes. I am. I'm living here for almost 21 years. I'm married with a Hungarian lady. I have two children and now everything is booming. <laughs> it's, I cannot do anything. Uh, uh, I, I do everything wrong in my life now in the moment. Mm. So, That's what she says, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'm feeling alone, uh, angry. Uh, everything what, uh, what Steve is saying in his uh, videos, everything I feel what is going on. So I cannot deal with it. It's very difficult. Mm, Jack, yeah, thank you. You're in to the right place. Man, yeah? It's very difficult, yeah. So how did you find this work? Did you, Were you searching and watching videos? Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, looking for videos in YouTube. I uh, got uh, Matthew from, uh, it was from YouTube, but uh, yeah. And I get a, a YouTube a film from Steve Horschman, eh? and that it was, yeah, ins inspiring me to, yeah, I like what he is saying, and then also not, and you are the other guy over there, or you're the third guy or the fourth guy. Oh, there's many of us coaches. I, I that's a good yeah. question. <laughs> the third guy or the fourth guy. I've never been asked if I was the third guy or the fourth guy. I suppose that's a good thing. But yeah, yeah. so just so you know, for those of you that don't know me, I've been in psychology and teaching and mental health for about 15 years. I was a okay. businessman through my 20s. And when I was 29, 30 years old, I switched into psychology and teaching. And with Steve Horseman, I've worked with him shoulder to shoulder since 2017. I've known him since 2015. Okay. I found I found him in a local men's group because I was in your place, Jack. I was in your place where I had the job and the life and the child. And all of a sudden she's staying out till 3 a.m. She's yeah. telling me that I need to make more friends. She's telling me that she's in love with me. She loves me, but she's not in love with me. Yeah. And so yeah. I found Steve Horseman locally here in Colorado in 2015. I'm about an hour and a half away from him. And a couple okay. of years later, we began to work together. So there, there are a handful of coaches here. But yeah, I've worked with Steve for a long time. We've done over 10 different in-person retreats together, I would say. I've, um, done, I've done a couple dozen, two, three dozen retreats around the country here and worked with hundreds and thousands of men over the years. I've been in private practice. So yeah, I'm one of the guys. Yeah, please. What, but what please so I, yeah, so I'm curious, you're with your wife right now. Are you separated or are you sleeping? Uh, no, I am living together because uh, uh, at our, uh, it's very complicated. We have uh, our own business together. Uh, we make a lot of business in Europe and uh, outside uh, Europe. So everything is complicated. We cannot separate it. Mm. We cannot live together. Uh, this is the biggest problem in the moment. And we have two childs, one of 20, one of 17. Uh, one of 17 is living at home in the moment and yeah uh, she wants her freedom and, and i was uh, controlling her uh, in everything she said to me and yeah. this life she don't want and yeah what to do yeah because i'm a businessman so i i like controlling everything you know the figures what is going on what's going on in the company what is going on everywhere uh, where we are producing so yeah it's difficult for me to um, let it go and don't control and um, yeah yeah absolutely he already and... is is with five months and i'm uh, searching the internet we are speaking with psycholog psycholog what is it yeah psycholog i'm not certain are we speaking with somebody? You, uh, they will help you. What is the English name? It's psycholog. I don't know. 
So uh, you're, you're seeing both of you are seeing someone as a couple? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, uh, for helping uh, to to increase yourself and this kind of things, uh, to help yourself, to find yourself, this kind of things. So yeah, it's difficult in the moment. Yeah, I hear you, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So this, the English, this the English control... is a little bit difficult for me because uh, I'm always speaking or or English or German or Dutch or Hungarian. No, you're good. I'm I'm the ignorant American that only speaks one one language here. So like no problem, no problem. So I was afraid about this meeting because I don't very well speak English. So it's a little bit. Oh, you're, difficult you're doing fantastic, Jack. You're doing fantastic. Don't worry about that. So let me let me ask you a question. You talked about control. Mm-hmm. So again, when when I when I say we turn our shoulders toward the world or our career as a man Mm -hmm. when we turn our shoulders toward our career we're not thinking about relationship it's like our relationship in that moment doesn't exist we're focused on hunting the buffalo right we're focused on making money we're focused on career or whatever it is we need to do and we don't feel connected to the relationship in that moment okay right we have skills and we control things and we are ambitious and we we go and hunt the buffalo and we bring the buffalo home yeah. And then when we turn our shoulders toward our woman, the skills that we need are very different than what we needed in the world. But we um, don't know that. We don't know that as a man. We just use what's been successful in the world most often. Oh, this is who I am. This is my personality. And that's what you're discovering is over time. And she's what she's saying now may not be exactly true, Jack. Her her observance of the past and have shifted. However, she does. She does feel that. She does feel controlled. Yeah. And that's a common yeah. thing that women say. Okay. Yeah, so, but we have another component inside because he's inside the business. So it's another relationship. We have a business relationship and then uh, in the relationship, you know, and to see it separately, it's it's who because when I do the business alone, it's easy for me. Okay, yeah. I forget her, you know, but she's also inside in it. Yes. And my, my woman's in my business as well. We worked together for many years as well. So let me ask you, let me ask you a question, then I'll make a point and then I'll move forward in in other things as well too. So my Mm -hmm. question, my question here for you is what do you believe is your next step for you as a man? What's the next step for you on your path? This is not sure because I'm. Uh, I was very sure about myself, what I want in my life, or what I did in my life. But now everything is. I'm so insecure now in the moment. I, I cannot even make decisions in the moment because yeah. I don't want any fight. Yeah, you don't want to fight with her. You don't want to be a- her to be angry. No, no. I don't feel, want to feel the pain in the moment. The pain is terrible. Yes, of course. Absolutely. The pain is terrible. So let's say, have you heard of the alien abduction story, Jack? Have you heard of that? Okay. So the alien abduction story goes like this. Let's say that you're walking along the beach with your wife. Your children aren't there. You're walking along the beach and she's told you that you're controlling and she's not speaking with you. She's walking, you know, a hundred feet away. I don't know how many meters that is, 30 meters. <laughs> yeah. she's, wa- <laughs> she's, wa- she's walking a far distance away. She's not talking with you and you're walking on the beach. And all of a sudden, a flying saucer comes out of the sky. A flying saucer warps out of the clouds and a green tractor beam beams her up into the flying saucer and the spaceship warps away, flies away, and you know you'll never see her again. Somehow you just know, of course, like it's terrifying and you're shocked, and you Mm. know you're never going to see her again. There's going to be a period of grieving. There's going to be a period of sadness where Mm. you you feel completely off of your your course because you were doing this with your wife, right? You feel completely off of your life. You don't even know which way is up, and the sadness and this grieving that you'll have for a certain period of time, maybe that's six months, maybe it's six years, maybe it's forever i don't know but let's say let's say past that period of grieving Mm -hmm. but once you're past the initial period of grieving what would you do differently than you are now with Uh, your life 
I want to be you a do better with your man. friends and your hobbies. Mm-hmm. What's that? Be a better man. Sure. So what does that mean? What would you do with your friendships, your hobbies, your children, where you live, with your work? How would you uh, change? Uh, I should uh, to do more with my children, and I will do it now in the moment. I, I was always thinking about myself. This was my biggest problem. <laughs> I did what I want. Mm-hmm. So what else? You'd be with your children? Mm-hmm. Yeah, to do more with Matilda, I will think about my wife because I didn't think about my wife, her feelings. It also, I don't, I don't know, but I was thinking about myself. And I was an egoist or maybe narcissistic man. Yeah? And you can say it this way. And now the five months, what we are, she said, okay, I need time, she said to me, and I was thinking about it, and I, I want to change, and I want to learn, and I was thinking about uh, the UK, because it's from 29 until 4 July, not? So with yourself, let me ask. Yeah, for myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's generally three phases that we go through as a man. One is external success success in career making money okay yeah then there's the second phase of looking within our own selves finding who we are what is our what does spirituality mean to us what does that mean at all what's our life philosophy learning about ourselves. and then the third phase is usually service to the world service to other people and often those will be cyclical we'll We'll have success, we'll find, we'll learn more about ourselves, and then we'll serve other people. And then we'll have external success, maybe physical success, or learn a new sport or an instrument. So Mm -hmm. external success, learn about ourselves, and then service to the world. And what I'm hearing from you is that you, your next phase sounds like service to other people is what you're wanting to explore. Learn about yourself and service to other people. Is that fair to say? Does that sound correct? I think, yes. And I have to uncover who I am because I don't know in the moment. (laughs) Yes, yes. So if she were abducted by aliens and you never saw her again, there'd be a period of grieving. Then you would learn about yourself, which you're doing here with us, right? You're you're doing in this work. And then you'd serve other people, it sounds like, whether your children or the world. Yeah, I don't. I want to give now empathy to other people. I want to help, uh, but it's not more needy. And I want to do something good because I didn't do very good in the last seventy years for my daughter, for example. Because yesterday she said to me, uh, "The last sixteen years, sixteen years, where were you?" Mm. I said, "Okay, you see, I am changing for a half a year already." I, no, yeah, 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 doing your best. It's okay for me. It's okay. So it wasn't nice and not nice, but okay. Yeah. yeah ah. t- and teenagers have. A, I my son is set. My son is nineteen now. Nineteen. Okay. Yeah. He's he's nineteen now, and all through his teenage years, he he asked. He said things like that to me. He said things like that to me, and it's very painful. So teenagers are, are ah. excellent at at Ooh. poking the knife through the <laughs> armor. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Go to your heart and outside. That's exactly. So here's my point. Okay. In in this work, we cannot control what she's going to do. We cannot directly control what she's going to do. What we can control is our own self, learning about ourselves, which we're going to talk about here in a second. Learning about ourselves, how to be more of a compassionate man, but know our values as well. It doesn't mean just to do what everyone else wants. It's to be grounded and learn our own values as well. And for you, the next phase, learning about yourself and serving other people. So if I'm, if I were you in my journal, I'd put number one, learn about myself. Mm-hmm. And number two, serve others. Yeah. And that, that is what I would focus on for you right now. And the space between you and your wife is going to need time to heal you will have to become a different man if she's going to be interested in being with you. And you are going to need to focus and be a different man if you're going to feel fulfillment for the rest of your life. Because like me, Jack, like me, I just focused on career and making money and I thought everything else was going to work itself out. And that that doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. I did it. Uh, yeah, exactly. Old, I make money, money, money. We have houses everywhere and everything. But it doesn't right. mean 
the low end. It, it, it's, that's it's right. Not, that's right. So now it's time to turn your shoulders, learn about yourself, and yeah. serve the world. So if, if I say that, I know that sounds very simple, but what I want to do is I want to give you a bit of a map. I want okay. to I want to point your compass and give you a map instead of instead of it just the compass spinning and you feel like there's no direction. Your yeah. direction is to learn about yourself, what you're doing here and you're you're doing with good guys to great men. And I'm sure you're reading books and other things. Yeah. So that's no books yet. I don't like reading. <laughs> oh, OK, well, do you listen to audiobooks? Uh huh. Okay, so I want everybody who's here live right now, what is the, only recommend one book if you, it was the first book that you were to listen as an audio book. Every man that's here, that's able to punch in the chat. What would be the first audio book that you would yeah. listen to if you were in Jack's place? Okay, punch that into the chat. I will hear it, I will write it down. Yeah, exactly. So that I'm giving you a small focus, a focus to learn about yourself through picking one or two of these audiobooks, and you can write them down. And also knowing that your next phase is going to be to serve the world, to serve your children, to serve the world. And I want that to bring some solace in your heart. Yes, you'll still have pain mm -hmm. as if she were abducted by aliens. You'll still have pain. But you can breathe through that pain and take a step forward, learning about yourself and serving the world. And that will serve you. That will make you feel more fulfilled and move you forward. And it will give you the best possible chance of having a new version of relationship with your woman, because you must be different to cultivate something different with her. Yeah. So that's that's yeah. your plan. Here's a bunch of and yeah, hey, I see it. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, good. So you've got a lot, you've got a lot of audiobooks. Uh, I would recommend No More Mr. Nice Guy first. I see that's in here. And that's what N-M-M-N-G is, No More Mr. Nice Guy. Yep. Hold On To Your Nuts is in there. No More Mr. Nice Guy. David Goggins, Can't Hurt Me. That's a really good one. This is good. So these are all fantastic. I, I would do No More Mr. Nice Guy first. And then and then I would get do Hold On To Your Nuts second. No More Mr. Nice Guy, but I am not a nice guy. <laughs> it's so I wasn't a nice guy right so I, I want you to get the book without judging it okay, okay. <laughs> way that way of the superior man I think is very good but I wouldn't honestly guys like so Harry I love you but I would not recommend that as a an, an early book that's more of a middling to later book yeah. so that's a good one but it's down the road being the strong man that every woman wants that's a little more red pill Dan yeah so that, that was said, not bad. What's that, Jack? My wife said, uh, I'm like a god. A god? I'm acting like this. You're acting like a god? So right right now, Jack, your <laughs> wife is very hurt. And she, yeah, I know, I know, I know. And, and so everything that she's saying is her, is her current emotions, her current yeah. feelings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you're in the right place. Thanks for jumping in. Thanks for getting us started, Jack. I will do it. I will come to uh, England, I think. There's free space I, still or not? For the retreat that's there with Dan Dorr? Yeah. Yeah, I would do that if I were you. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. will come or not? So I'm not going to be there. I'm not going to be in England this time. You're in Colorado. Yes, I'm in Colorado. I am going to visit Europe. I have plans to come to Spain. There's men that I know in Spain and oh, work yeah? with there. And Portugal, uh, and yes, I'm absolutely going to come to the UK as well. I guys, did you know Dan Dor lives next to Sherwood Forest, like the legit Robin Hood Sherwood Forest? So, no. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I need to visit Dan and Sherwood Forest. I'll, I'll be doing that. Hey, Jack. Thank you so much. I'm going to press. Hey, one up. question: How old are you? How How old am I? <laughs> guys like to ask me that. Are you hitting on me, Jack? Is that what this is? <laughs> no, no. I was I was born in 1978. Okay. Thank How about you? you? 70. Yeah, you got me beat. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Thanks for getting us started, Jack. I appreciate it. I'm gonna press pause on you. Yeah, absolutely. All right, gentlemen. You may have seen earlier in the chat before I was speaking with Jack that I put some links into the chat. Steve Horseman asked me to do this as well. And so the first line you'll see here. If you want to speak to any coach within Good Guys to Great Men, and we're all phenomenal, that's the first link there. 
My website is Great Men Move Mountains, so greatmenmovemountains.com. If you want to reach out to me directly, greatmenmovemountains.com slash contact. And on my website, I've got a free 45-minute audiobook called The Staircase of Intimacy. And there's other information if you want to reach out to me directly. I have a free private Facebook group as well. There's over 300 guys in there. So greatmenmovemountains.com slash Facebook, or you can just search Great Men Move Mountains. Let's take a step forward. How to heal and open your wife into more femininity. Yeah, there's some great conversation going on in the chat. I love you guys. Also, always feel free to go to the reactions button in Zoom and raise your hand within Zoom. And I'm happy to call on you or post questions into the chat. It's I'll see it more readily if you raise your hand and then we can talk, you know, talk here live. I'd rather do that. But please post in the chat if you like and other men can engage with you as well. So why is she so closed down? Again, I'm not just going to talk the rest of the time, but I do want to present this to you. So why is she so closed down? I love this picture. <laughs> this little girl's got crayons in front of her and she looks like she's, I don't know, hungry, tired, upset. She didn't get the candy that she wanted. She's got to write her ABCs right now. And so she's really unhappy with life. She, it's not fair. She wants to go play or she doesn't want to be done drawing with her crayons. She doesn't want to put her crayons away. And she's really unhappy with life right now. So she's going to tell you. She's going to show you. Look at that girl. She's going to show you that she's not happy. Right? And now your woman, your wife, she's not a little girl, of course. But we all have a child within us. We all have our own child within us. We have a little boy, our own little boy within us. And she has a little girl within her. And when she doesn't feel like she's getting what she wanted from life, when she feels, quote unquote, betrayed, or she's been left alone, she feels pain inside of her. When she doesn't feel connected, if you're not present, if you don't have the skills of what to do, the lover skills of what to do and how to connect with her, She's going to feel like this on the inside. And now, most men, including me, all men, when we come to this work, she's brought this to the outside. She's brought this and she's finally, if you will, showing you her pain, showing you her upset. Does that mean that you need to give this little girl, you know, the candy that she's asking for because she's upset? No. And we all know that giving this little girl candy, if she's tantruming, is a horrible idea. It's not just trying, it's not about trying to give your woman exactly what she's saying, because that's not going to fix it. That's not going to ultimately make her happy. The goal here is to see that she's in pain, to open our eyes to what we've been blind to. And that's what this work is about. That's what this coaching is about. That's what these calls are about. That's what my coaching is about, is opening your eyes to the blind spots that you've had and that I had in the past. This, this slide is very important. Actually, I put this in, excuse me, I put this in just before our call because I, I wanted to make sure, excuse me, <clears throat> I wanted to make sure that we all realize that there's three forms of personal work. There's the healing of the past. So number one is therapeutic work of something that's happened in the past. It may have been 20 seconds ago when you had a car accident and the person behind you calls 911 and the ambulance is on the way. The EMTs and ultimately the doctors that you'll work with will work with you in a therapeutic way to heal the wounds that happened in the past. You may go to a therapist to talk about emotional wounds that have happened in the past in your childhood or through your relationship or trauma that's happened to you. That's therapeutic work on the past, emotional work on the past. So there's therapeutic work, there's spiritual work, and there's skills work. Spiritual work simply means, it's not, this is not a religious reference, but spiritual is always in this present moment. You could call this conscious awareness. You could call this the universe acting itself through you. You could call this God or Jesus breathing you and moving you or motivating you. Or, if, you know, I grew up sec in a secular way. I was not religious. I'm, I'm not religious now. But conscious awareness of this present moment is another way to say 
you're not in your head. You're not in your thinking. You're not thinking about work. You're not thinking about how angry you are, the way she treated you last week, right? You're in this moment and you're in your heart, so to speak. You're in your body. And a, a trick here, let me give you one trick. To come into this present moment in your mind without, you could speak it out loud, but in your mind, ask yourself, am I aware? In your head, you ask yourself this question, am I aware? The answer is always yes, because your awareness is being asked that question. You're asking that question of your own self, and that brings yourself into the present moment of awareness. So that's a mental way to do it. A bodily way to do it is to focus on your breathing. Like aim your mind, your intellectual power, on your breathing and feel your breathing. So of course, there's much more meditative practices, praying, spiritual practices, but spiritual personal work is being able to be in this present moment without your monkey mind getting in the way. And you're conscious, you're in this moment. That's spiritual personal work in the present. And then there's skills work, skills practice for the future. Maybe you're going to the gym and lifting weights, or you're reading a book, or you're, um, what would be another one? Of course, you're taking career, you're taking courses for your career. These are skills that you're practicing in order to have something different in the future, to be better at something in the future, or to have better health in the future if you're exercising. So there's three forms of personal work for you and for anyone. Yeah, journaling. Thank you, Tony. That's a great one. Journaling is actually all three of these, really. Right? So why is she so closed down? It's because she has pains either in the past or she has pains not realizing God through her or the universe through her or she has trouble feeling the joy of the current moment, a spiritual, spiritual pains of this current moment. Or she isn't focused on what do I do on going into the future so I can have more joy or happiness or healing in my life. And this is for you as well. When you're in this pain, the little boy inside of you is closing down. There's a pain in one of these three areas. So let me read an example of a man that posted this. Well, I believe this is from about 10 days ago. He says, last night, she says something like, because you pushed me away. And she's referring to my, he says, quote, wrong responses of her perceived disrespect. His apparently nagging where I've allowed anger and spiteful words over the years. She has a blistering list of offenses that she's never come to grips with from her end, he says. Okay, so he's putting a bunch on her too, right? She's got a bunch of things that she's never come to grips with on her end. I've forgiven her over and over without the same in return. Only thing that works is to keep my mouth shut. I know the work being taught here, but I can't seem to break the damn cycle. So let's see. Can be assertive but loving when this thing is so flips up. Oh, how can I be assertive but loving when this is so flipped upside down already, do I go celibate while waiting for her to actually want me again? Asking to make love just makes her disgusted and pissed off at me if I wait for weeks at a time with no arguing at all. So he's saying, even if there's no arguing at all, when I ask to make love, it just makes her disgusted and pissed off at me. If she's done, I don't know what can be reversed. We have so, so much to lose. Our kids would be devastated and financially it would be absolutely absurd. I'm losing my hope. I want to open this up right now. What are you seeing? This is man. This man is not new to this work, but he feels like he's stuck. And it seems to me he knows these things intellectually, but he doesn't know how to bring it into his body, bring it into his life. And he keeps becoming angry and spiteful. And she feels like she's just punishing him. And she feels like that she's been disrespected. And that she, he's press, pressuring her for sex. And he doesn't understand. So she gets pissed off at him. 
who can relate to this spot? Who can relate to this spot where you feel like you may be intellectually know this work, but it doesn't seem like it's going well in life or you feel like you're losing, you know, you're losing momentum or you're losing faith. Unmute yourself. Come on in, please. Hey. Yeah, Isaac, please go for it. Um, yeah, I can uh I can relate to what he's saying where he's feeling like stuck and frustrated. And I think I've seen uh Steve and you and other people talk about how basically what he's doing, he's just kind of letting her run the show. Is that you know, his mood and everything is, you know, based on her approval or acceptance or whatever of him. And he needs to kind of like sort of take her out of the equation and figure out kind of like what he wants, what sort of man he wants to be and work on that. If she wants to come along with that, great. If not, he should still end up happy with the guy he's being. Yeah, I love, Isaac, it's it's easier to see from the outside into someone yeah. else's situation what's happening, right? I, I'm trying I, to do that same myself. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so relate this to you, please. What where are you within that story or where are you in that journey? Um I am working on figuring out like basically what I want for me, basically kind of like where do I want to be next year? Mm. It's like, you know, okay, today, what choices are you making that uh 2024 Isaac is gonna be happy with? And so it's like, you know, uh gotta do this call. After the call is done, got to pop over to the gym because uh, 2024 Isaac wants to be in better shape, wants to be able to do like, you know, 5Ks and stuff like that. And, um, you know, if my wife wants to join me at the gym, you know, we can go work out together. If not, it's nice still having that me time. So that works too. Yeah, very well. So what what happened for you, Isaac, that helped you turn a corner in your perspective that you're seeing that this man hasn't yet turned the corner on what helped you make that transition um i think it was steve's um his one his youtube video the happily divorced man mm. where he was talking about you don't have to be divorced to be a you know a divorce a happily divorced man and I realized, yeah, I, you know, staying married or not, I would like to have that type of mindset where I wake up every day and be like, oh, okay, now this is what we're doing today. This this is what I have to look forward to. And I realized that was something I'd been lacking myself. So that's when I started trying to focus more on, okay, what are you doing so that down the road, you can look back on the choices that I'm making today and being like, yeah, I think I'm okay with that. Because a lot of the choices I made before, in the years before, I'm like, yeah, I, I don't kind of like where those brought me. So, And mostly I was doing those choices as far as the whole what's going to make her happy and what is it I think she's won and let me do the hummingbird thing and you know, try to constantly gauge her moods and everything. And it was driving me crazy. Yeah, yeah, well said. So I, Isaac, along the way, now, do you still have sadness and pain i'm thinking about jack that we were talking with earlier right and he's like in so much pain and now that you have this change of heart on you focusing on you who do you want to be tomorrow next week next year as you were saying do you have sadness along the way you're still human i'm assuming right yeah that's i still have you know days where uh she'll do something and you know i'll like jump to fix things or jump to try to make her happy and I have to either try to catch myself before I do that or afterwards I was like, oh, backslid again, but okay. Yeah. And do you, do you punish yourself for that or how do you handle that now? Uh, I just try to do better in the future because it's like, yeah, I can, you know, punish myself, but that's not going to stop. Like if I did something like last night, it's like punishing myself isn't going to do any good for fixing last night. That's just going to be like start a shame spiral. Oh my God, you're such a moron. That's like, okay, well, 
that was a swing and a miss. We'll we'll try again next pitch. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I mean, and even if I'll show you this slide real quick again, you saying, well, I bombed that one, you know, swing and a miss on that one. There's going to be another pitch coming tomorrow or in any moment. Like that's a therapeutic way to look at your own self. Like, oh, well, you know, I stepped up to the plate and you can have a different perspective on it. And that then your presence, what is, if I may ask you, Isaac, what do you do to bring yourself into that present moment when you're around her or you're wanting to honor stillness in your mind? Um, usually, I think my biggest problem is like when I start getting upset. I start getting like emotionally heated. So I guess my grounding exercise is I try to picture just like this frozen plane and then there's like an ice tower in the middle of it. And I just try to focus on that. And that basically helps me emotionally cool down. And it's like, it's it's just the ice tower. There's nothing else around it that, and it's, it's kind of like, it's okay. It's standing there. It's not crumbling. It's not falling. It's not cracking. It's just standing up there. Oh, wow. And so it's focus on that. That's so cool. I haven't ever heard it put that way before. It's like a forever stillness that's always yeah. there. Yeah. Fantastic. So good. Thanks for jumping in, Isaac. Appreciate it. No problem. Yeah. Glad you're here. So that that ice tower on the plane, that's so cool. I was feeling into that as you said it. I'm wondering, these men from the past, right? This famous photo of steel workers, high-rise steel workers. I, I can't imagine what this would be like. I mean, my stomach even turns over looking at this picture. But this, the solidness, the depth and courage that these men must have within the, their own selves. Now, I want to honor again that we as men, when we're in our career or we're when we're facing the hunt or when we're in the middle of work like this and facing this these life or death situations, we're not thinking about a relationship at that time. We're not thinking about how to connect with her more at that time or how I can be different as a man when we're in the middle of it, when we're in the middle of hunting the buffalo. But these men, I, I, I just think of the courage here. And the type, the type of life that we have now, this reminds me of gratitude. This, this picture reminds me to think about my life and the challenges I've had compared to these men and what my day-to-day -day looks like compared to these men yeah, and the grounding that they have in that moment. And yet I do have compassion for when they go home. I know that most likely nine out of 10 guys don't know how to bloom their woman. They don't know how to heal her and open her. And that's what I'm discussing with you here today. That's where I'm talking with you about today. So let's go into some of the other teaching I want to do for you and ask questions about this, guys. Again, I'm not here to just listen to myself talk. I call this head, heart, balls, and breath. The head piece is what can I put into my mind? How can I actively think of something when I'm going to be around her or I am around her, we've heard high regard. So knowing that she has that hurt little girl inside of her, thinking of her in a, in a way that she's on a path of pain within her own self. Gratitude for our life and kingly vision in your mind. Kingly vision in your mind is if I were literally a king of my life right now, if I had the responsibilities of a king, a benevolent king, but also I knew that not everyone was going to be happy with my choices. And yet I did everything that I could, that I knew within my values to protect those around me. And she's in my kingdom. It doesn't mean that I control her, but I'm a king in my life. How would that shift how you perceive what's going on? How would that shift how you would perceive her if you were a benevolent king? That's kingly vision in your mind. Heart, physical open posture. Empathy for her situation. Empathy for yourself as well. Curiosity for what's going on. You feel inspired by life. And love in your heart is how I feel when I have gratitude in my, in my mind, when I have gratitude for my life. So open posture, curiosity. You are inspired by life. Balls that you know what your values are. You know what your boundaries are. 
And when you take action in the world, it's based off of that clarity. You're pleased with yourself. You own your sexuality with calibration. So you are a man that wants intimacy. You are a man that wants sex and closeness and connection. But you learn how to do it with calibration. You dance the staircase of intimacy, as I say. You don't just try to jump to sex. Even in this man's post here, he, he just says, do I just go celibate and waiting for her to actually want me again? Asking her to make love just makes her disgusted and it pisses her off. It doesn't sound to me, there's no discussion here about a stepping into sexuality, a staircase of verbal intimacy, emotional intimacy, and slow physical intimacy without an attachment to sex, without an attachment to, am I going to put you know my dick in her vagina and come today? Because that's all that she thinks you care about if that's all you go for every time. So how to own your sexuality with calibration is something I teach deeply in one-on-one -on -one and in group coaching. And we do within Good Guys to Great Men, of course, as well. And breath. Are you breathing slowly when you're around her? Are you breathing deeply into your belly? Do you have a relaxed, relaxed body language? Doesn't look like you think there's an attack coming at any moment. And you can be present. You can be present and aware. Head, heart, balls, and breath. So let me ask every man here right now, punch into the chat, which one of these four areas do you believe is the biggest challenge for you? How to have high regard in your mind, in your head, how to have kingly vision in your mind, like I'm a king of my, I'm a king of, the, of my life. Heart, love in your heart, empathy, curiosity, open posture, balls, knowing your values, your boundaries, you're pleased with yourself and you know how to own your sexuality with calibration, or breath, in the moment, especially around her, because that's mo the most difficult. You can breathe slowly into your belly, a relaxed body language. Punch into the chat which one of those is the most difficult for you. Now, heart, balls, got a bunch of, <laughs> got, a, got a bunch of balls. Yeah. My wife says heart balls is the hardest. Yeah, Larry, come on and talk about why that's the hardest. Why do you believe that here values, boundaries, please with yourself, own your sexuality. Why do you believe that's the hardest for you? Um, you guys hear me in, on this? Yes, go for it. Larry. Yeah, okay, so, no, I got the head. I guess uh, I've been doing this for a while and I go through all those steps. Of course, you guys all teach from a little different way. And I think it's great because you get to say, wow, that's a different way of putting the outline because I'm a outline and flow chart guy and that's the way i think for work and I, I i see i like this head head heart balls and breath i guess i'm pretty good at three of the four of them the, the balls one i would say is not knowing what it is about your boundaries but implementing implementing it and sticking to it especially your values because part of the no more mr nice guy part is you might have your own set of values but then you also want to be the nice guy and please her to get, uh, what do I want to say, uh, validation or valid, I guess that's the right word, validation and appraisal or approval from her. So therefore you bend your boundary a little bit and I've gotten better at it. And you're right. I'm to the stage now where I don't give a fuck what she thinks as much as I once did or like, Ooh, I better make sure. Now you just say you do it, but I still find myself doing it. Or if I text her or something like that. I still even find myself sometimes, not all the time, sometimes going, well, did she answer me back? And then you learn like to say, well, if she answers me back, great. And if she doesn't, don't answer for half an hour or an hour and not be the respond back in fucking 15 seconds type thing. I'm better at it, but I still find that's the one area where I feel like I, ooh, did she respond back? And I gotta say, and I think Steve told me one time and you too, hey, let her slide for a little bit. You don't have to answer immediately and don't make, you need to not have the feeling of uh, good about yourself through validation from her. You need to be validated from yourself. And I'm better at it, especially where I'm at now. But I still think that's the one out of all four of those that I have the most time to be work on the most, I guess would be the way to say that. Yeah, the, the, the pleased with yourself from the inside, validating you from the inside. So when you... When you send that text and 15 seconds later, she hasn't responded and it has this like 
raises the hair on the back of your neck or the devil on your shoulder starts to speak with you. What do you think that's about? What do you think the fear is there? That's you, that's you doubting yourself. That's you doubting that I am not getting the, I must not be good enough for her to respond. That's where I think that comes from. That's the, 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 the rejected little boy showing up. That's where I think that's from. Am I right? I mean, is that, or is that one of the places it could be from? Well, absolutely. I mean, we're all a soup of many different things, right? Child, all of our childhoods are a bit different the way we've been raised. But that's the, that's the reject is the rejected little, little boy part. I think is what you're saying. Like, Oh, did I get a sponsor imme immediately? Because I remember when, you know, 25 years ago, it was the other way around. I was like, Hey, I got to go to work. I got to deal with this shit. And I think she felt the other way around of, Ooh, he didn't respond to me. And I think that's part of the reason we thrifted is the whole, uh, deviated as she was taking care of kids and I was taking care of work. And I was like, Hey, I got to take care of my shit at work. That's, that's how we uh, pay our bills. Sorry. I got to go. And I, I shouldn't have done that, but I did, but I was also didn't know any better. And that was also learning and doing exactly what our fathers did. And the biggest thing from our dads was don't be the fuck up and don't be the guy who doesn't provide for his family. And I put my head down and make sure that I did not fail at that. Yeah, mine, mine was the same all the way back from, I remember being uh, nine years old, shoveling snow in the Minnesota winter and not wanting to continue to shovel. And he came out and I was probably playing or messing around. And my dad said, hey, don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. Keep shoveling. And I remembered that forever. And, you know, I love my dad and he wanted great things for me. And he, but the, the main thing is, man, you got you to gotta throw the spear, kill the buffalo and bring home the meat. Otherwise, nothing else happens. And we, we didn't learn all the rest of these skills that we're learning now through this. No, I, so, yeah, I've, Larry, and I've, go ahead. And I've shared that with my dad. And he said, you know, my grandfather was an alcoholic and he, my, my dad said, I didn't exactly have the greatest role model either. So my, I, I had to forgive my father because he did the best of what he could because he had a dad who was, which would have been my grandfather, um, who was, you know, on and off with employment, had a problem struggling with alcoholism and he died in an, age of 55 or something like that uh when he was young so my dad one time i said something about it he goes you know i didn't i did the best with what i had because i didn't have the greatest role model either so i've tried to do better for you and my grandfather my father didn't always wasn't the best provider for me as kids and i don't want i want to know that if you work hard in this world you can succeed at that well i did i mean i did well at that but i think i did it at the expense of the relationship of my marriage especially early on I was good with my kids, always coached little league and open house and art night. And let's go to this ball game. Let's go to the pirates and penguins game. I was good at that. I think the one spot was with, I just thought well, our marriage, this is the way it is at middle age marriage. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love the healing that you've done with your dad. It sounds like where you connected with him and you have compassion for him now. And, and of course, so everyone's seen this before Maslow's hierarchy, right? Our, our dads wanted to teach us how to just solve the physiological needs, right? Put food on the table, safety needs. And it's kind of, it's like, all right, my son can figure it out after that. And I don't, I don't hold that against my dad either, but that's the reality. That's the reality. So Larry, where are you now? We've, we've talked before, of course, you, you know, so where are you now in your relationship with your wife? Where are things now? Um, we're, we're currently separated. Um, we actually get along probably at any time better than in the past. And because I've spoke with her many times and said, I much better understand your hurts and what drove you to wanting to be separated and you wanting to leave. And that I didn't know or consider how hurt you were. I thought like, hell, get over it. You know, um, I was frustrated with her part about not telling me there was a problem till like the rock hit the bottom of the pool. I think you explained that, that she kept it internally. And then all of a sudden they explode outward. I told her she's like a, a you know, the volcano that finally erupted because she kept it in, but her, you're going to love this. Her mother's like that too. Wow. Big amazement. Yeah. Cause my father-in-law told me that he goes, Oh, look, that's where she got it. I go, you didn't give me a warning. He laughed. Um, <laughs> yeah. He goes, I needed to unload her. No, he didn't say that. Um, but <laughs> but that's where that's from. And so she and I get along pretty well. We're at that stage of it's been two years. Uh, my kids are older, you know, two are in college and one's out. But we're at the stage where we're like, hey, this is what I want from this marriage. 
this is the direction I want to go in. I would love it if you would join me, but if, if that's not what you want, and I, at this stage, I'm not hurt, I'm not mad, maybe disappointed, but if that's not what you want, I'm willing to part our ways and let you and I both go uh, in our other directions and be a, a respectful, loving ex-spouses and still do stuff with the kids from here to there. But it also, I'm, I'm a religious guy and I feel, this is me personally, we all gonna make this choice. I don't feel like I could be dating another woman until I'm divorced. And that's the decision I put for me and my value. So I said that to her, right? And she says, well, what if you wanted to see somebody? I go, well, I'll wait till we're divorced. And she said, do we, and you'll love this one, Jeff, do we have to? Like, she's like hoping we can hang out somewhere in the middle, like, cause she's still on like a health insurance. She's still that type thing. So at her, it's like, I want to be buried to you for legal reasons, but not for relationship reasons. And, and like I said, we're getting along really well, but I kind of said, no halvesies. Um, we can work through some things and, and we both still go to church and everything and nobody had an affair. And I just said, look, with God's help, we can do this, but we both got to put work into it. Well, guess what? We, we agreed to, to go meet with, uh, do it through mediation. And there's this form in Pennsylvania where you each get an attorney and it's called collaborative, but it's a form of mediation, it's collaborative divorce. Well, guess who's turned in all his papers? Uh, me. And guess who won't turn in her papers? Her. So it's almost like we flipped 180 from where we were before. I'm the one now saying, look, if you don't want to be married, that's, let's move on and depart, uh, you know, part, uh, amicably with a loving way and respect and and still be good friends but and, and she's the one dragging her feet <laughs> so that's where yeah. i'm at yeah thank you Th so let's let's talk about that for just one minute this is important sure sure important for every every man here to to realize and this is the really the limbo question why doesn't she tell me what she wants why isn't she stepping forward why is this just limbo well you have to understand that the feminine desire is for safety in addition to love and connection is for safety. And she doesn't want to lose what she perceives as all the positive things about your masculinity. I mean, the health insurance, but the also providing. Your, yeah. The providing your taking care of my kids. Exactly. So she doesn't want to lose those parts of your masculinity, but what she's in that moment, she's telling you, but I want to go pour myself into another man potentially or she wants to feel free to go pour herself into to be available. Yeah. Be available. Yeah. Now you, we don't, I, I hope any, every man here realizes that she's not doing that maliciously. No, I don't think so either. Yeah. She's not doing that maliciously. However, if we allow ourselves ultimately, okay, let's say you've been doing this work for a year or two. And you feel grounded and happy about your life. And you've invited her in these calibrated ways. And you've been working with me doing coaching or Steve Horseman or Dan Doerr or any of the other coaches. You've been in the round table. You've read books. You've posted in the forum every month for the past year or two years. And ultimately, it just stays in this limbo phase. If you allow her to keep having the benefits of relationship but not stepping into the intimacy and closeness of relationship with you, what does that feel like for her? It feels weak. It feels like you don't care about yourself. It feels like you're fine. You're not, you're not standing up for yourself. You're not standing you're up for yourself. Yeah. Now, please, no one take this in the wrong way. Okay. Don't just knee jerk, make some decision. But many guys ask, I've been in limbo. I feel amazing about my life. I'm inviting her. The, really the answer there, and if you want to talk about this one-on-one -on -one with me, please do reach out and we'll talk about this one-on-one, -on -one, okay? But the answer is that you must be on a slow, progressive path toward disillusion of the relationship over time. And I usually say over a two-year span, if this is something that she doesn't want to step back into with you. And if you're not on that slow progression, very slow progression, toward disillusion of the relationship, then she'll instinctually feel you as weak and that you're put pedestalizing her and that you don't have, you don't feel value within your own self because what, what are you going to do? Just allow limbo to go on forever. Or are you going to allow yourself to basically ultimately be used in that way? And so where are you within that process, Larry? This, well, and, oh, and that's, 
-hmm. we've had some talks in the fall right before Christmas. And that's exactly what I said to her, you know, and this is with the guidance of, of you and Steve of saying, Hey, if this is not what you want, then we need to go proceed with this disillusion through the collaborative divorce. And I'm willing to do that. And then she'll show waves of like dude stuff with me, you know, for a week or two. And then she backs off. And I think I've talked to you and Cynthia about this when you have the C note show. And then she gives me the Heisman trophy, the, the arm out. Like, Whoa. <laughs> I love how you I, say I, that. It's so hilarious. I, 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 I let her, it's almost like, Oh wait, I let him too close. I shared my heart with him. I opened up to him. Ooh, no, I don't want to do that. And then she backs off. So I get that roller coaster. And, and Cynthia said, women feel that way until she feels totally secure with you. It's like, Ooh, I'm trying him out. Ooh, I don't want to let him close. And I get the roller coaster. And I've even told her that she does that to me. And she goes, I don't mean to be, that's just the way I feel. I go, I said, look at it from 180 degrees. How does that make me feel? I don't know what the hell way you want to go. And I said, if you don't want to do this, then let's un let's not let's end this lovingly, respectively, and let's do this because this isn't what I want for what a marriage should be or what I want from a marriage. And I think I said, I don't think that's what you really want from a marriage either. And she nodded her head. Then I go, then let's undo this. And guess who's stalling? Her. Yeah. Yeah, and, that, and that's normal. So I, I want everyone to know that that's normal. She's not doing this maliciously. No, I don't think but she it's is. Up to, right. It's up to us as a man to point our compass and have a path. And I'm very generally saying that the path is not to stay in limbo forever. The path no, is correct. to progressively. And again, I want to say like over a two-year period of time, because even Chris put in limbo is an opportunity to improve myself i'm using this opportunity of limbo to improve myself until i get to the point where i feel stronger that's that's perfect this space is for both of you you may not you may not want it but this has brought upon you the opportunity to deepen in yourself in space and so take a year or two to again like i want to repeat you're posting in the forum every single month you're showing up to calls you're reading books in a slow way, right? So you're reading books. You're maybe reaching out for coaching. You're asking going on retreats. You're going on, I've been on three of them potentially. Yeah, you're meeting. Or if you don't, let's say like, well, shit, I don't have money. You're on Zoom calls like this. You know, the roundtable is not expensive. You're asking questions on the Facebook forum. You're connecting with other men around the country or around the world and just getting together. You know, you're uh, what's on your bucket list? You're growing your own men friendships again you're as if she were abducted by aliens mm -hmm. and you're doing all that work for a year or two. I'm speaking to you, Larry, and every man that's watching this, every man here, mm -hmm. you've been doing that for a year or two. And what's the slow progression then thereafter. And again, any man that wants to talk with me about this or post on the round table about this, please do. Thanks. Larry. So here, here, here I just want to comment my one last alternative. Cause I spoke with somebody is if she's not willing to participate in this collaborative form, because that has to be you both equally enter into it, then I have to go do it the old fashioned way and actually do go through old fashioned divorce of litigation and just have her served. And then you're on a schedule set by the court of doing that. The downside to that for me is I make significantly more money than her. And I have, a, I've been told from a couple of attorneys, I have a significant more amount to lose if I get some ruling, because the judge just follows his flow chart and his formula, then I do if we did this mediation thing where you agree to whatever all four of you agree to. So, but yeah, I ultimately, so, uh, I may, what it, so, but I ultimately what it sounds like, that. yeah, I hear you. And what it sounds as is, is like you're crossing your fingers that you don't have to use lawyers and go to court because you would lose more financially. You don't, I mean, she knows that, right? Oh, for most likely, yeah. Yeah, she knows that. And, and you're in the spot of, okay, I can't move forward with, with my life intimately until I'm divorced, if that's what you decide when, mm -hmm. if, okay. And I'm also not wanting to make a decision and push because I would lose financially. So you're well, I, told, uh -huh. I told her we both would lose. I said, that's going to cost us 30 or $40,000. That's going to cost both of us more money, just the lawyer part as well. Well, let me, let me give you a little hint, Larry. Women don't give a fuck how much the attorney fees cost. Okay. I'm so that doesn't mean that. anything. Yeah. But your my point with you is 
your values are dictating that you don't move forward in intimacy with any other woman, which I personally agree with. I mean, any man is going to have different values, right? right some those are mine. Say, yeah, right. Some men also, like I'll play the other side of the table for a second. Some men say, well, she's abandoned the intimacy in the relationship and therefore that's violated the intim that's violated the relationship. Other men will say that. But your value, so you're at a value conflict and you're at a financial conflict. And one of those is going to have to bend or, or change unless you want to keep yourself in limbo forever. Is aw Now, I'm not telling you to do something today. I'm just planting a seed because you and I know each other decently well there. I'm planting a seed in your mind to think about over time and post about in the forum and ask on future calls and things. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right. Thank you very much for your yeah. input. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Larry. Appreciate it. And press pause on you. So I want to show that the, we just had a difficult conversation about if she stays in limbo and if she's not moving toward you. I want to know that women do move back toward you through this work. This work does inst instill in them intimacy and desire, whether it's for you or it's for other masculinity in their life and you want it to be you, but this does help women turn back towards you and start version 2.0 of your life. You can't control all those pieces though. So here's an example of my third bullet here of today. Let me find this slide again, not that slide. What to say when she challenges the new you. So maybe you are being more grounded and a fantastic man and you know how to turn your shoulders. Maybe you are practicing the head, heart, balls, and breath. And she throws, she shoots a cannonball across the bow. You're just doing this to manipulate me or I don't believe in this new version of you or I don't trust this new version of you. Here's a man where things are going better. She's opening more verbally and more connection and closeness with him. And there is some physical connection again already. I'll read this quickly to you. Hey guys, we all have different experiences and I'll share a sample of what I've encountered recently. My separated but living together wife admitted early this morning when I got off my night shift that she wanted to talk and started opening up about how she's been frustrated with me. She's noticed that in the last three to five months, so that's the length of his work at the time of this posting, she's noticed that the last three to five months that I don't react anymore. I basically don't react anymore. I don't get pulled into her vortex of her, her, her emotional battles she may be having. And she was wondering how I've managed to be such a different man and how I've managed to stay with the same positive energy, regardless of anything she says, how she acts, or if she stomps around, or if she stomps, or if she turns cold towards me. The strong voice inside my head said, high five to myself, but my outside voice, his actual voice, asked her the curious question, tell me more about what that looks like to you and why it makes you frustrated. So he's sharing some of what he's learned with me and what he's learned in my groups. Tell me more about what that looks like for you and why it makes you frustrated. Her response was a surprise. She admitted to wanting me to react, withdraw, or pursue to ask her what's wrong, basically all the old ways I used to be for years. She actually used the words testing me without even thinking about it. I calmly paused, took a breath, kept a little smile and said, this is the man I'm learning to be. This is the man I want to be. And this is the man I will be in the future, no matter who challenges me. She responded with a big hug and said, this is the man she never thought I would or could be. And she's been immensely surprised that I actually had the understanding of how to get there. So this is the kind of, this is the kind of experience that you can have as a man with a woman. Now you cannot control this, of course. And in that vein, here's the stoic triangle. I love to use the stroke stoic triangle. The three sides are virtue. Virtue means what are our values, our boundaries? What are the hills that we're willing to die on? The side of control means what can I control and what can I not control? And the third side is responsibility. Am I taking responsibility and acting on my values, my boundaries? 
Am I taking responsibility on what I can control? Am I not taking responsibility for what I cannot control? And of course, we cannot control what she thinks, what she feels, what she does. We cannot control who she is, but we can control our own skills and what we're talking about here today. So what does it look like a, when a woman is more feminine? I pulled this from the book, The Masculine in Relationship by G.S. Youngblood, which is another great book. And he actually just released a few months ago, the audio book version of it, The Masculine in Relationship. And some men wonder, what does it even look like? What does feminine mean when a woman's more feminine? So if I do these things, Jeff, I use the head, heart, balls, and breath. I take control of what of my own self. I have my own path, my own vision. I have compassion for her. How do I even know? What does it mean for her to be more feminine? Now, don't tell her to do these things. <laughs> don't just say, do this, be more feminine. Okay, that's not going to go well. But I want you to keep an eye out for little signs. Little signs that your deepening masculinity is working its magic, is affecting the energy between the two of you because it's physics, it will. And some guys only think like either sex is happening or not. And that's the only gauge that they have for this work. And you're really, you know, you're missing the forest because the trees are in your face. Your, your face is too close to the next tree, which is when am I gonna get my dick wet? Is, and that's ridiculous. So I want you to look at these signs of when she's blooming more femininity through your work. She cares about beauty more than utility. There she might, she might opt to wear something that's a little more pretty than just pants or sweats. She might show some softness or a little bit of ease in contrast to the get it done furrowed brow look that she might carry around. She will be able to provide more nurturing energy by knowing ways to ease your stress or your worry or your fatigue. She may have more of an inner glow that radiates out through her smile, or maybe she's laughing a little more. She's more in touch with her body, capable of moving it in seductive ways. She can be more open following your lead rather than endlessly challenging you. She trusts you. I missed a bullet point here. She trusts you, assuming that you've earned it rather than criticizing you. She deeply desires a heart connection with you that goes beyond physical attraction, beyond pragmatic partnering, beyond the daily pragmatics of life, and beyond just having fun together. She wants a deep heart connection with you. That's a more opening more of her femininity. Or she fiercely tends to the flow of love between the two of you, including calling you out to be your best self when your behavior interferes. And she, again, this isn't malicious. When, when she's in pain or when she's saying that she doesn't feel connected to you, she's not doing that to man, manipulate you, hopefully. She's doing it because her heart hurts, her heart aches for the what she feels is the betrayed space between the two of you, that the relationship between the two of you is, has been dying or has died. And to her, that feels like a deep ache in her heart. And for us, that feels like an, an ache in our heart as well. But as a man, like we we're talking about with Jack earlier, often we've just been focused on life, killing the buffalo, making the money, bringing it home, you know, and we just want to have peace. We want to have relaxation and peace. And that's not what her feminine heart wants. Her feminine heart wants connection and to be seen and heard and blooming and emotional range. And I, I teach you how to do that all along the way in my work. Okay, I want to give you a solid skill, a solid daily practice to take away. So if you're on a phone, you can take a screenshot of this. Or if you're, of course, watching this in the recording, you can pause the recording and take a screenshot of this if you like. This is my morning kingly plan. And my morning kingly plan is something I give to all my one-on-one -on -one clients and all the guys in my groups. And I want to give it to you right now. Okay, your morning kingly plan. One thing you're appreciative for in the day, read one page of something inspirational and ask yourself, what do I know to be true about myself? So even if I just had three minutes to do number one, two, and three, I'd, I'd encourage you to do these every single day. 
in your mind or in your journal. I do this when I'm on the toilet in the morning, right? Like I, I have a good 10, 15 minutes at least usually on the toilet every day. And you could do all the way number one through number seven in 15 minutes because I, I know because I do it all the time. So number one through number seven, you could do every single day in 10 to 15 minutes. Number eight, I'll save that for another time. I won't describe that here. That's a whole different exercise that I teach in my coaching. So the boardroom exercise is a, is a different thing. So if you want to ask me about that, certainly reach out to me and we can talk about that. But number one through seven, you can do every single day in 10 to 15 minutes. And I won't belabor this, but you guys can, you're smart. You can read this. Now, some guys say this out loud to themselves. Um, often I'll maybe use these questions when I go for a walk out in nature, like what doesn't work for me right now? I might ask myself that out when I'm out looking at the, the clouds or the trees or the sky, what would work for me? What do I want in life for myself? If she were abducted by aliens, what would I want in life for myself? And what is the next small step I believe I can achieve toward this want? It's important for us as a man to have action items for ourselves, but the mistake is that we make them too large. We think they have to be a home run. And what I'm encouraging you here is to go for base hits. Step up to the plate and swing the bat and go for a base hit. That's the next small step I believe I can achieve toward this want. Whether it's joining a call like this or posting in the round table or calling and setting up a consultation with a coach, reading that next one page of the book and journaling about it. Swing for a base hit. That's what I would encourage. All right. So one last time, I'll show these important links. If you want to reach out to any of the good guys to great men coaches, if you want to reach out to me, if you're, if you want my free 45 minute audio book, the staircase of intimacy, if you want to reach out to me directly or join me in my free private Facebook group, please do. And I'll put these into the chat as well. We have just about three minutes here today left. All right, gentlemen, who has a final question or uh, something they want to put on the table, either for me or just for all the men before we end here today in our final few minutes? Unmute yourself. Come on in, please. Jack, you put into the chat there, what to next? What is, how do you mean? Is that a question for me? Go and mute yourself, Jack. Hi. <laughs> yeah, please. What's your question? Yeah, what to do next? Uh, to go to one of the links, to go to the round table or to... Yeah, sure. So what, what are you doing now in this work? Are you in the round table? No. Okay. So that that's very affordable. And there's okay. hundreds of men in there doing this work and that you get three calls a month access to Steve and Dan and questions. So that's, that's very achievable. That's very doable. If you want to talk with me, you can reach out to me directly in my link, right? The Great Men Move Mountains, greatmenmovemountains.com slash contact. If you want to reach out directly with me and we'll have a no strings attached call, we'll do a first okay. consult call and I can point you in the right direction right away. And if anyone wants to work with me, we can talk about that as well, but I don't talk business on the first call. It's more of how to help you and put you in the next direction. And also to get the audio book, No More Mr. Nice Guy, right? All the guys all through the chat recommended all these great books. No More Mr. Nice Guy, Hold On To Your Nuts. Again, Way the Superior Man I Would Do Down the Road. Goggins yeah. can't hurt me is really good. Uh, I uh, I heard Eckhart Tolle. You know. Him? Oh yes. So he has uh, <laughs> the power of now and New Earth. Uh, yeah. Are two of his. They're very different. Yeah, the, they're very thick books too. Ek and Eckhart Tolle, he has many YouTube videos, many yeah. many YouTube yeah. videos, which are excellent as well. But uh, yeah, are you living in the past, not in the future? Living now. That's right. 
And that's, that's that spiritual confidence that we talked about. He's a, he's a quote unquote spiritual teacher of consciousness of being in the now. And that's the form of personal work that he talks about is the, the presence practice of spiritual presence. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Absolutely. I cannot do a lot with this, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah so certainly join the round table reach out to me if okay, you like I grab that. one book mm -hmm. absolutely thank you very much for today you're welcome you're fantastic right, graham and graham put in the chat here too four years separated but now it's turning around using a lot of stuff we talked about yeah i'd like to reconcile but if not life will go on absolutely hallelujah yeah and everyone that said thank you for the session you're welcome gentlemen i love that you're here uh, join me. I have weekly calls. Check out my stuff. Ask me questions. Love that you're here. Larry, Jack, love you guys jumping in here. Dan, Caesar, good to see you, buddy. Absolutely. And everyone else that's been here today. Have a good, have a good weekend, guys. Ciao.